That should be the new intro music. Holy fuck do I love this song. Woo! I hope you like it too because you've been hearing it all the time. Oh, we got that waveform up real high, don't we? Jesus Christ. Hopefully that that faded out nice right there. Welcome back, you beautiful sons of bitches. How y'all doing today? Yeah, you missed me last week. I know you did because I would miss me too. Uh, Shit happens. Shit happens, baby. I don't have all that free time. I mean, I have free time, but not... Enough to, like, record, I guess, sometimes. But it's going to be regular. It's Tuesday. There's going to be a little editing there at the beginning because there's going to be a fucking intro. Hopefully you heard it. If I release this and I and you didn't hear it, just know that I am fucking fuming. We're also working without a pop filter today. And wow, that waveform fucking spiked real hard. We'll, it, you'll live. You'll live. we got to relax. Is that going higher or lower? Ah, there we go. It's fine. It's fine. What the fuck? Who cares? You don't care. I don't care. It's fine. We'll move beyond it. The intro better be there. Be fucking fuming. Working without a pop filter today because we got a new microphone, Arn. And guess what? Arn? That's not a word. I mean, maybe it is, but it's not one that I know of. It doesn't matter. I got a new microphone arm because the other one doesn't work with the current setup of my desk, which might change because your boy might be building some desks. That's for later. So there might be lots of popping. A lot of pop, 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 pop. Popping them peas. Popping that, you know. Anyway. I love that fucking intro song. I sent it to somebody. I mean, most of you who are listening to this right now already heard it previously. I've told you this. This is it's. It's just. It, I feel it when you eventually get video and you get to see this. This be- <clears throat> anyway. When you just see me, you, then I mean, you're gonna know. You're gonna know what's up. I got the fucking. I got the. I got the the nice button up shirt with the oranges ready for summer out there. You guys ready for the heat? I mean, it's, it's been fucking hot today. Outside weed whacking. When I find out that weed whackers are not... That's not a common term. Nobody calls it. It's like a weed eater. It's a weed whacker. They're whacking. Out there whacking weeds. <clears throat> I don't know. You'll have to let me know if it's like a specific... Like, Let me know in the comments. Or just text me. You probably know me. The Is that like a specifically like a northern new york redneck thing because i mean that's how i was raised i was raised northern north jesus how do fucking words good huh i was raised northern new yorkish redneck pretty hardcore if i'm being honest um so i wonder if that's where weed whacker came from for me is that really i remember calling it a weed eater maybe a little bit it was a weed whacker they're whacking weeds baby Okay, I can't just keep saying that on <clears throat> some kind of crazy, like, obsessive, compulsive need to say "we whacking," putting them, putting them H's in there. You feel me? I don't have a lot to talk about today. Not a lot's been going on in my life. I mean, just normal, normal shit. Who gives a fuck? You know, well, just some. Of the, you ever have someone just sit in front of you and lie, just, and like terribly, terribly, like, you just. They got tears in their eyes, cry, <laughs> and you know they're just full of shit. How do you not, I mean, the position, well, I don't know how much I can talk, but it doesn't matter. The position I'm in, in this situation, I couldn't laugh in their fucking face like they deserve. Which is really what you should do anytime someone's laughing. You should laugh in their face. Unless they're, well, I mean, I'm not really, I wasn't the one being lied to, necessarily. I was just in the room while the lying was happening. Let's put it that way. And it's just, God, some people, drugs a hell of a thing. Like, don't, don't do, like, crack and shit's bad. Crack or meth or whatever the fuck this person's on. They're definitely fucked up, though. They ain't... Is that judgmental of me? Probably. I think I'm, I, I do, I have a really, like, low, well, not so, here's the deal. If you're doing those things and I don't know, or your life is functioning and I'm surprised by the fact that you're a crackhead, or not to say crack. Well, I mean that's it. Let's put it this way: if you do crack, and I am surprised by the fact that you do it, you are probably not a crackhead, and I don't have that negative opinion of you. I would. I have the same negative opinion of someone who's like a fucking still like potholes, like those sluts that just suck cock for, for like eighths. 
Not even like an ounce, like a fucking like a like a lady. She's out there sucking cock to get an eighth of some fucking dirt farm weed, just smelling like a whole bale of hay. That's what they're out there fucking just deep throating three and a half inch, just fucking loser dick. I feel the same way about them as I do about fucking disgusting, like disgusting crackheads. You know the difference. It's anybody who is just sl- like I know tons of people that are fucking drunks, but like they handle their business. It's like there's a lot of fun. I think meth is the one that you can't like. Oh, I just do for fun. Like I've met people that do crack and you wouldn't know. I've met. I've I've even met a couple of people that seem like that they do heroin, like they shoot up, and you wouldn't. Necess- I mean, you kind of do. Like, when you find out, you're like, oh, that's why you're, like, so skinny and your eyes are so sunken in. But I've ne- just, I've never met, usually somebody does meth, I mean, all the people I've run into doing meth are at my job, and good God, it's very obvious. Like, it's very, like, holy fuck. I, well, and again, I maybe I haven't enough people. I could probably know someone who's on meth, and I'd be like, holy fuck, you do meth? That's that's surprising. I don't think so, though. I think it's gonna, I think it's gonna be all bad. Folks, <laughs> don't flush your heroin needles down toilets. Don't do that. Because then you have to take them out of the toilet. Just put them in a fucking trash bag. Put a trash bag, throw them in a dumpster. You know what I mean? What 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 the fuck are we doing? Brings me to another thing. Oh, well, I guess it's something to talk about. I bought I I ordered some woodworking equipment that I don't know if I'm going to keep. I may return it because it may be Maybe a, a, it's just it seems like a, a very good idea because I like working, I like, I like making things, and I've usually I've been pretty good at like word working situations when when provided with the proper equipment to do so. I feel as though I do all right. The amount of popping from this, I really have to get a a, a fucking pop filter and have to order that after this after this episode because the popping is fucking real as shit. If I back up off the mic, turn the thing up. But I like being close to the microphone. You know what I mean? I don't want to be like too far away. I have to work on the the audio, make it all buttery smooth. Anyway, back to the woodworking stuff. And I feel like I could really make a bunch of cool wood shit. And it could be kind of fun. Because the I was talking to my one friend who makes 3, 3D print stuff and was selling out on Etsy for a while. And he was saying that Etsy takes like a really like I think it takes like ten to twelve percent of whatever you're selling, which for the the items he was making I think would be like it would be a, a, like a problem, but I think with the stuff that I'm making because maybe maybe I don't want to say this for sure and it, I could definitely be wrong and it, but there might be a chance that the markup on what I'm making and the time it would take versus the time and effort involved in. 3D printing the things he was making might be less. There's just less room for... Or there's, there's more room... More room for her? Less room for her? I have less of a... Situ- there's less of a situation for me where I'll be fucked over by a mistake. Like, I don't have to start all over again. Like, when you're 3D printing something as one piece and, like, it fucks up, you have to start all over again. Which could be like four, eight, ten hours into it, and it fucks up, and you have to start all over. So, whereas if I'm cutting legs for a table and I cut one too short, I, okay, like that one's now scrapped, and I could probably turn into like sconces or candle holders. I can turn that fuck up into something else that I could then put on there, and then who gives a fuck about the ten percent? And I can just make another leg. Because the wood, the wood itself doesn't really cost that much unless I'm making something super fancy, which I'm not at that level yet and isn't something I have to worry about. So a lot of stuff I've been making I could make in bulk at a decent price to me. And then with the how much of a markup you can put on um, handmade woodwork or handmade wooden items is kind of insane. Like, I'm really surprised by it. And then, of course, you do see, like, there's a lot of wood stuff on Etsy, and that is that is fair, because there's a lot of people who realize that as well. Um, but I've decided that I'm not going to try to, like, really put all my eggs into one basket and any one thing, really, because that's not me. I think that might be part of the problem that I've had for the last few years, is that it's just not how I do anything. 
Like, I may be, like, obsessed with one thing for a while, but that's not... Like, I will be obsessed with that thing for one while, for a while. And you can't base, um, like, making money solely off that as a beginning thing. But if I work on all these things individually and don't look at any one of them as the... This is the end all be all. This is my golden goose. And I look at them all like, well, this will make me $200. And this will make me $300. And this will make me $100. And this will make me $500. I could piece it all together just doing a bunch of different shit. Like I was, I saw, I might, I might, I don't know how I feel about it. I, if I, well, it depends if I can make, if I can make funny TikToks about it. I'm, I could maybe see myself doing those affiliate link things on TikTok and making, um, like ad videos for certain products that are on there, especially if I can find like woodworking stuff, anything that it pertains to what I actually do, I would gladly, especially if I like the thing. Um, cause they do have some like cool kitchen knife things and I've got, uh, I could like sharpen it and shit and do it. I could, there's, there's, I, I could come up with some things just if I try a bunch of different stuff and what I don't like, I don't like. And if I do like it, I like it. And if I'm doing eight different things that all make me a hundred dollars, it's 800 bucks extra a month. I can put towards whatever the fuck I want. And that's not to say this podcast doesn't pop off. In which case, I would still just be doing the same thing. All my Patreon stuff will just be videos of me doing any one of these other projects. Like, would you want to see me woodworking? I was making the joke that if I could get in shape, I get like a six pack and some pecs. I'm doing woodworking and with my shirt off or her TikTok for sure. All Thirst Trap City. If you like, if I can get hot, if you don't think I'm making th- like Thirst Trap in a way that. Let's put it like, I mean, as long just me being me would be a thirst trap. And, you know, just, you know, wear something, look, look kind of hot, chop some wood, give that fucking, that burly tattooed asshole who throws his fucking tools around a run for his money. Let him know what's up. I mean, I, you know, a man who respects their tools, God damn it, just fucking throw it. You just use it to chop this fucking thing. You just toss it to the side. Is that what you do with things that you, okay. That's fine. What did you just don't? And then, you, then, like, was it a gift? Somebody gave it to you? You don't appreciate the shit that you get? That's insane. Listen, even if it was, like, a, a fuck, like, I'm telling you right now, somebody, some sponsorship or some company sends me a thing, even if it sucks, like, I'm going to take a decent amount. But if it doesn't suck, you used it. You fucking used it. It clearly worked, and you just chuck it. The fuck are you chucking shit for? Why? Does it look cool? Listen, bro, it doesn't look cool to me. And I don't, I'll be honest with you, I'm not interested in the chick that thinks that is cool. Like, look at him just disrespect his equipment. Like, what the fuck is that? I'm glad that you don't give a fuck about that axe. Like, that's great. Was it? It's a cheap axe. I'll buy another one. Is that how you feel about your things? Okay. How much money till you start replacing people, motherfucker? How about that? Huh? Maybe I, maybe I have a little bit more respect for people and things that I own than you. Perhaps that's it. And that's the problem that I have with you, not the fact that you're clearly over six feet tall, jacked as fuck, tatted up, in the woods, making a bunch of money. Fuck you, I get to be jealous. Eat shit. <clears throat> Is it unbecoming being jealous? Maybe. But what if green's your favorite color? Who knows? The shadow knows. The shadow knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men. Which is an odd radio show. I've listened to it before. I want... I think I'm going to try listening to it tonight. I'll put it on for sleep. It's just a little creepy, you know? Like, uh... I've recommended Gunsmoke... I believe the Gunsmoke radio show. It's on YouTube. It's fan-fucking-tastic. Uh... But, like, when I watch the radio show for The Shadow, it doesn't... Maybe well, I I, I should, well, we preface it with saying I've I've watched shitloads of Gunsmoke, so maybe the fact that the world building that I imagine to myself exists in the radio show isn't real. It's that I've already assigned, um, places and things, and I have a I have a frame of reference enough for it that it builds itself in my mind, so it doesn't actually have to. So, like, I can see them walking to the Long Branch, even though it's not what's there. They have, it's the Ella Verganza, which, you know, you'd know that if you were as cool as me and listened to the radio show. But, you know, not everybody can be as cool as me. Somebody had to be me. And you're lucky that I'm the one doing it, because I'm so goddamn gracious. Anyway, you like I said, I'm going to start watching or listening to The Shadow. I watched it. Okay, so I watched a couple movies. So I told you fuckers I was going to start watching these things that I have on here. Did I talk about the Holy fuck, this black dude. Jesus Christ. I wa- Oh, shit, that's probably make a bunch of noise. I don't know. We'll figure it out later. We'll, we'll worry about it in post. 
Anyway. Jesus fucking Christ. Uh, th- sorry. The So I watched this movie. What the fuck was it even called? Let me, let me check my Plex history here. I mean, w- minus all the pornography that's clearly. Uh, I mean, load for sure. Jesus fucking Christ. No, it's fine. Take your sweet ass motherfucking pimp time. What is this movie? What, hello, America? Some, well, see, what's, what's, now, this is what's happened here. What's happened here is that someone has been watching shit on my Plex in my room when I've created multiple user accounts for everybody to watch things. Now, now, who do you think that might be? Who do you think it might be? I think, I think it might be, and it might surprise you. It's the little hellion. It's definitely a little Tannis in here because, you know, people want to get things done, so you have to give them something to watch. And, of course, it's this. And, of course. So now I have to go through the 9,000 things before I actually get to it. Hello, America? What the hell is this? See, now we've hit a... Who was... When When was somebody watching It's a Wonderful Life? I see Bringing Up Baby. That's a fantastic movie. That's a 10. Suddenly Susan's great. This can't be... Old Yeller. What the... What? See, this can't be correct. What is happening here? See, this is something went wrong. This has got to be boring as fuck for you. Okay, so, but there's this movie I was watching, and it's about this guy who is, like, killing his business rivals or business partners, I think. Can't remember which. Doesn't matter. They don't really, that doesn't, isn't really the point. The point is, is that he, like, talks to the, the, anyway, he kills a guy, and there's a character in this movie who's this, I mean, it's a fucking movie from the 50s, and it's this black dude, and he's black as night, right? And then I assume, and I'm watching this going, oh, Jesus Christ, they made him super, I mean, it, I mean, it's racist. <laughs> like, he's, I don't like to call things racist because I'm not, the, the whole time I'm watching it, I'm like, well, no, no, hold on. Because the reason they have him acting so goofy and dumb is because then he can be wildly surprised at things and the contrast between how white this guy's eyes are versus how black his skin is looks really good on camera and the way black people emote on camera looks better than when white people do it. There's more, like, color to it, I guess. And it's more vibrant. It's, 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 so I, the whole time I'm like, it's fun. that's why they're doing it. And so it gives them the opportunity to act like that. And it, no, no, it was, I mean, it just, it, he fucking, oh, no, sir, and, like, runs off. Like, it's, it's, it's what every black dude does as a, a character. When it, is it, a, yes, a massa. It was basically that without saying massa. And this dude, but he gets lots of laughs, you know what I mean? So, I, I, it's a little, it's a little, slightly, but I want to say probably for the, for the time, it's not the time it's not it's it's because they're I mean, he's there he's getting paid i don't and i don't know what the rate is because I, I don't know i don't know enough to, to say that it's super racist i haven't like looked into it which is where i think a lot of that, that bullshit comes from where people are like they just assume it's 1950 so or 1940 30 whatever whatever decade before 1990 really maybe the 80s where you just assume everyone is wildly racist and it's just it's just a given. It's like, oh yeah, everybody's racist as fuck. And it's probably true in like certain places, but I don't know. Like it very well could have been he, he got paid the exact same amount as everybody else that starred in this movie, which was having a low budget. I don't they didn't recognize anybody in it. That doesn't mean much because I don't watch a lot of movies from that time period yet. I'll watch more and start to see if I recognize people, but nobody seemed all that like to stand out really. So it was definitely a cheap movie. It was kind of funny, but it was dumb. It was just it wasn't it wasn't very good. That made me sad. Uh, I watched another movie though with John Travolta, who I I love him. I don't care what anybody says. John Travolta fucking rules, and I I it sucks to say it because he sucks and a lot of his movies suck. But there's just something about the guy. It's called Cash Out. It's a terrible movie. It's fucking horrendous. It's not good in the least, but I loved watching it. It's just something about him. He's just got 
Like, the charisma he's got on screen, for some reason, captivates me. I'll watch his terrible movies. He's got great movies I love, like, uh, <clears throat> Basic is, Basic's 10, of that year. I think, like, the 2000 to 2010, I think it was. I remember saying, like, Basic's, like, the best movie. I think it was one of the, one of the my favorite movies of the decade. I can't say the best. One of my favorite movies of, of that decade, for sure. Uh, but, I mean, that, that goes with a grain of salt, because I like The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. I've watched. I've watched it since. I still like it. I don't understand what the hate is. Like I don't get it. Like why you gotta hate? I mean, I understand not liking it, but people fucking hate this movie. But they hate it a lot. And I don't understand. Is it because there was like an expectation based off of like the the comic? I think it's from. I don't know. I thought it was kind of cool. It was characters I hadn't really thought of. The one guy I never even heard of, and I was interested in reading his book, but I guess it's really dense and not that, uh, not that fun. So I mean, yeah, you'd, you'd assume I I like good things, but sometimes I don't. And it's Cash Out. It's from two thousand and twenty four. It's so not great, and it's 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 bald Travolta too. I wonder if that's a thing. If he's got like he's gone bald and he's just accepted it. He's just like he watches too much Joe Rogan. He's got to stop. I think in this he's got it. He's well, maybe not. Maybe it's gray. Hold on, let's take a look. Because he's got to stop. Um, dying the dying the beard. Yeah, he knows it's died, bro. You got to let it go. Let's put that salt and pepper in there, baby. Everybody likes it. The ladies like the salt and pepper. Don't hold on to being young. Being young's fucking stupid. You're gonna be young and dumb as fuck again. I mean, I guess if you're him, being young was cool as shit. You're in Greece and Boogie... Not Boogie Nights. <laughs> boogie, boogie Nights. Whatever the fuck that dance movie is. Something Fever. I don't know. It doesn't matter. It doesn't fucking matter. You know what the movie is. And if you don't know, you don't give a fuck anyway. But I guess if you have, like... If you're, like, when you're young and it was awesome as fuck, you're like, oh, I gotta hold on to being 20. I'm like, well... Try not living the life you led when you were 20. I don't think you want to be 20. Being 20 fucking sucks. It sucks. Like, I said this before. I don't... I can't... It's hard. Like, it's kind of... Well, I don't want to say that. It's... It is... It's interesting talking to younger people. Like, they fascinate me. Some of them I adore wholeheartedly. And there's other ones... And then there's, like... Cause the, like, the, the, the space in life. Like, the gap between where I am right now and where someone who's 20 is is it's only 15 years but it's not it's it's a lot it's all it's a fucking lifetime it's like it's a lifetime so you talk to these people and you can see them because like most 20 year olds are fucking woke they're woke or they're like very very right wing in a really annoying fucking way that I can't stand but the when you talk to them, you can kind of see because they'll be in a place where they're you can see them like caught up in I'm 20 bullshit, and it leads you down like political paths and thought processes that will change. Like they will change, and you can kind of see you can spot the people who are like semi woke, and that this isn't a thing that you'll hold on to forever. You're in you can because they'll really like, talking to them, you'll hear them say things about how fucking psychotic some of the shit they say is. And the, or that they don't agree with like these things and these things. It's like, oh, okay, you're you're not, you haven't drank the Kool Aid. You're just hanging out at the parties, like that's it. Which is good. It means that they'll once they you know have a kid or grow up and have something in their life that matters to them, and you realize how many forces are working against you to fuck you in the ass. Which I don't know if I've talked about before, but th- now that we've moved closer to it. I need to say again, on the political standpoint, there's the, here's the deal. Both political parties fuck you in the ass. That is a fact. Because that is their job. That's their goal. Their goal is to split your cheeks. Their absolute end goal is just getting as deep inside of you via your asshole as humanly possible. And they just have two different ways of doing it. And the the way of doing it is Republicans eventually. Like the, when, I, when I say this, I mean the actual politicians, not the people who follow either one. Is the politicians who get in place. 
these people will give all of everybody's money to, well, actually both sides will do it. But it's because, again, they're fucking you in the ass. They'll tell you, Republicans will tell you they're fucking you in the ass, but you are you deserve it because you're a poor fucking loser. And if you only made more money and found better ways to cheat the system, then you wouldn't have to be fucked in the ass. But you're not because you're stupid and you're poor, so I'm going to fuck you. And that goes for everybody who's middle class and below. Like, if you're not a uber-fucking-super-millionaire putting all of your money across the country, across like in, across the country, Jesus Christ, I'm fucking stupid. And you shouldn't take anything I say with any semblance of, uh, uh, see? See what I mean? You shouldn't listen to anything that I say. This is just for entertainment. But they put it in a fuck like in another country, or their 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 base of operations is in some other country, so they don't have to pay eighty percent tax. So they end up paying zero fucking tax, unless you're one of them. You're poor, and they don't give a fuck about you. You're nothing more than a monkey. Like the the middle class just gets used to pay for all the shit that the rich don't want to pay for, because the middle class people are not rich. Even like people that you think are rich, they're not rich either. Because <clears throat> this is the deal. This is how this is how it works. This is how like this is how. We're, listen to me. I've never been to college, but this is how it works. But it is. This is. But it is. It is. This is how it works. Okay. If you're a monarch or you're any of these these aristocrats, and you realize that the worst thing that possibly can happen to you is that the poor rise up, the, the hungry poor rise up and eat you all alive, literally and or figuratively. That's the thing that you worry about the most. That's the thing that you fear. If you create a system in which you never have to worry about the poor being so poor that they can't feed their children and themselves, creating a situation where revolting and actually going into a revolution is not feasible for the average person, then you're completely fine to do just about whatever the fuck that you want to do and have no repercussions whatsoever. And the best way to do that is, well, we got to make sure that they're fed. Well, I'm not fucking paying for that. You think I'm going to pay some disgusting fucking street rat to be able to, like, to allow them to eat? It's like, well, no, of course not. It's like, no, so you create a thing called a middle class that never existed before, and their sole goal is to, to work them to the fucking bone and take almost everything that you possibly can from them. And then you use that money to pay for the poor so that you don't have to worry about it. And then you don't have to worry about either one of them joining up because you control the media and you convince both sides that it's, well, it's those middle class rich fuckers that look down on you and don't do anything to help. They've got tons of money. And then they tell the rich, they tell the middle class, well, it's because of the poor. If it weren't for them, they wouldn't be taking all your money away. We wouldn't need to take it to to feel the food stamps. Meanwhile, food stamps get paid for with a fucking small percentage of what you pay in. The rest of it goes into black book projects and DARPA and that bullshit that half of it's probably not even real or it just vanishes. Trillions of dollars just vanish randomly all the fucking time. All the time. That's me hitting my microphone. They say all the fucking time they just vanish into thin air. Like, what? We didn't have any money there. What records? Records of a loss? No. 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 No, 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 no. No. And that's where it goes, and that's how that works. That is exactly how that works. The idea that you're going to do anything to it's like oh we're working we're working hard to change blah 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 bitch are you out of your fucking mind AOC is a set of tits and some giant eyes on top of a government plot like that bitch is only there like who do you think she got elected like it normally of course these people all get funded and you fund her because she's a fucking moron who's kind of, sort of, hot-ish, even though she's got a bug face. But you throw around the rest of those politicians, and those fat-ass titties will blind most 20-year-old men. And they're like, y- yeah, dude, uh, totally, totally, man. I agree with whatever she says, whatever she says. Because your dick is in your ear like, yo, man, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, man, I'm telling you. These dork bitches, they don't, they're not that smart. You just got to play the game. You just got to play the game. Because everybody, every dude's dick talks to them. It's just some guy's dicks are fucking retarded. Like, they're even, like, every guy's dick is dumb as shit. All right? But some guy's dicks are certifiable. Like, they're just completely stupid as shit. Like, yo, this chick that doesn't shave her legs because she thinks that that's a, 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 a 
Jesus Christ, that that's some product of the patriarchy and that it's controlled by men. If it wasn't for that, then we'd be hairy as fuck. Yes, be a hairy, disgusting animal. Dogs sleep on the floor. All right, that's just, it is what it is. I don't care if it sounds bad or it's terrible. Dogs sleep on the floor and there will be no, ew, ew, fucking ew, dude. What do you mean? Like, I don't shave my legs. Okay, cool. Neither do my guy friends, which is basically what you are now, which, I mean, this is all it takes. Listen, if you want a trans, as far as I'm concerned, just stop shaving your legs. Then you're halfway to being a dude to me as it is. The only thing that could make you more of a man to me than not shaving your legs is dating one of my friends. You're dating one of my friends. In all fairness, that's if you're cool. If you're cool and I'm going to talk to you, then you're a guy now. But if you're not cool, then you don't even exist. Like, you're not even a person. Just know that if you're dating or you care about, like, a friend of mine, you hardly exist you're like a faint whisper in the wind when you talk and if you're in front of me it's as though one of the paintings on the wall have come to life and have moved from space to space that's about how real you are to me just to prevent any situation or scenario where i'm having a conversation with you and you decide to confide in me as though i don't know your people and i give a fuck and in reality, it's not so much that there's anything wrong with you. It's that what in the fuck benefit is there to us having a conversation? Because the only thing that you're going to do is tell me something that I don't want to know because I probably should share it with him because I give a fuck about him and I don't know shit about you. And I say him because really, if you're a female friend of mine and you have a boyfriend, I don't give a fuck at all. Because here's the deal. That guy hates me. And if he doesn't hate me, he doesn't care at all about you. And th- this isn't like I'm doing anything because I'm not. I'm old now. I ain't doing all that shit. If in this whole like, if, if oh, call him up and see if he's going to fuck you. Bitch, if you call me, you call me in the middle of like, hey, you should come over. Like, for are we for what? Like, are we smoking or something? What? Is just smoking some bowls? You want to chit chat? I might be down for this. Uh, I kind of want to fuck. And I'm like, well, uh, no. Because. I, or you you have a boyfriend I know what happened to what's his name but yeah we broke up and it's like all right cool um you're in a real fucked up place right now and the idea that I'm gonna fuck you in whatever mental state you're in is nuts and that I'm not fucking anybody I am an old man now I have hung up my belt because I am the fucking champ don't ever get that twisted I may not be fucking anymore but I am the greatest to ever do it god damn it I hung that fucking belt up so these bitches like no no, I'm not fucking any of these friends, especially because, like, as strange as it sounds, a lot of, like, the <laughs> the female friends that I kind of have, or the girls that I have talked to recently that I would be friendly with are all way too goddamn young to ever even, like, cause you, like as you talk to them, like, yeah, they're pretty, but, like, you talk to them, and it's just, good God, it's just, I mean, it, there's just nothing there. Like, they have... <laughs> They have no life experience. They're just not even life experience. It's just like the stuff that they talk about is so childish, I guess. And it's just like the 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 cadence with which they speak. Maybe it's because life hasn't crushed their soul. There's just something not as attract. Like you lose attraction when like you realize you're talking to someone that life hasn't stabbed in the throat over and over and over again. It's like because then we have that in common at the very least. It's like we have in common the fact that life has decided on occasion that we're fucking trash and that we need to be told as much. I don't know. They're just not. They're nice to look at. We talked about it before. They're nice to look at. But it's, I also enjoy talking to them because they're they're so goddamn fascinating. Younger guys are, and I well, all that because I'm I'm, con, I'm concerned about raising my daughter genuinely because I don't know. It seems like every woman I know has fallen into the trap of being with complete pieces of shit. And I don't know if that's be- not, well, I mean, my guy friends, their, their chicks are lucky, but a lot of the, the girls I know, the guys, they've, I, they're just, it's just trash and they just, and they allow it. They, al- they let it, they let this be the case. They're just like, no, nah, that's what I deserve. It's okay. Like how the fuck do I prevent that from being a thing that runs through my daughter's head? Cause I'll kill this motherfucker. And I don't mean like, oh, anybody that's with my... No, I mean like if you treat my daughter like shit and make her feel less than, I will cut your fucking heart out and put it on a plate. Are you out of your goddamn mind? Just break up with her. 
just break up with her. Like, you know, be with her and emotionally abuse her. And we're not even talk about physical abuse. My daughter allows that to happen. Not only will I'll whoop her ass. I don't care if, well, you're making the problem. No, clearly you want someone to whoop your ass. And someone who actually loves you might need to do that so you don't fuck. If you want someone to hit you, you can come home. I'll slap you in the fucking mouth out in the street letting some dude put his fucking hands on you. You're out of your goddamn mind. But have some fucking self-respect. This is what I understand is like, what? What? How you haven't been? It hasn't been instilled in you to not allow another motherfucker to treat you like that. How is that real life? Like, have I not dis- d- displayed to you on a daily basis that I refuse to allow someone to treat me like a piece of shit unless you're paying me an exorbitant amount of money? And even then, I might tell you to go fuck yourself. How is that not a thing? That was a. Bra- I had to take a drink. You know, hydrated, agua, H2O, H2Olga. It's a Danny Phantom reference. Another thing you should have already watched before you listen to this podcast. But, again, if you were as cool as me, you'd be sitting here next to me doing this bullshit with me. But it's okay. It's okay, because eventually, eventually, you'll absorb enough of my bullshit that you'll be just as cool as me, and we'll be all together. But, anyway... As I was saying, how the fuck is this humanly possible? I don't understand what allows these women to just do. Just, you just let him talk to you like that. You just allow this to happen, and then you want it. That's the thing that even like well, like they leave or something. They're like, "Well, I want him to come back." Why the fuck do you want the person that treats you like shit to come back to you? What the fuck sense does that make? Does no one in your life love you enough to tell you that what you're talking about is fucking retarded? And I've watched all this stuff about like how you're supposed to treat you that are with someone who's they're dealing with narcissistic abuse. And it's like, I understand that. And you should probably talk to one of those nice ass people because it's very fucking hard for me because I can't possibly handle it. Like when you tell me the shit that happens to you, I, it makes me fucking furious. Like in what world? I wish somebody would try and fucking tell me that the reason that they did something stupid as fuck was because I said something to them. Go, go fuck yourself. Oh, you made a mistake because of me. And how is that? Well, you fucking woke me up this morning. Bitch. Why don't you fucking suck a dick, you fucking loser? What are you talking about? It's like always, because is it? Or, or, I just, I just, what fucking world are you living in? That this is how you allow someone to treat you. I can't, I literally can't understand. I hate myself. Like, I hate myself with, there's no one who has a lower opinion of me than me, probably. Well, maybe. Maybe there's some, there's a few other, but I fucking hate myself. I don't think I'm a great person at all. But a mother motherfucker wants to think anything about me at all. I may be dog shit, but I'm not so bad that I'm going to let some fucking cock sucking piece of shit loser fuck dick suck wannabe piece of fuck. Anyway, just, I'm, I'm angry thinking, I'm angry thinking about someone even attempting it as we speak. I can't even formulate a sentence because just the idea of it frustrates me to no goddamn end. And then I get like angry for the person I'm talking to. And then sometimes I get a little upset with them. Like, how the fuck? How do you? Yo, you're my friend. My friends can't let themselves be treated this way. What the fuck are you doing? Like, the, as though they owe me something. Like, well, I owe it to Mike to not let somebody treat me this way. It's like, this is why I need to have a cult. Because then I'm the cult leader, and I'm I'm like your god, and you're disappointing your god when you let someone fucking treat you like shit. Stand up for yourself. No one else is going to. I'm not going to fucking stand there and stand up for you. Nothing that, like it. I will stand up for anybody that stand up for themselves. The, the, like, you're fighting back against a bully, and you can't. I'm going to help you. But if you just sit there and fucking take it, like, what what do you want me to do? Like, you don't care enough about you to do something about it. I'm supposed to? Like, I'm so, like, just these, I mean, it only happens in movies. I've never had anybody, like, sit there and, like, taste me and, like, look at me, like, will you help me? Like, what? what? Help you with what? And then you can't, because sometimes they'll end up defending this guy, and it's like, what kind of fucking sick relationship shit is this? Like, how do you choose to be this miserable? I don't understand, I don't, I don't, I don't get that. I mean, I, I've, I, wallowing in self-pity, I understand. Dealing with, like, allowing yourself to be treated that way, like, treating yourself like that, I get. But to allow some other fucking inferior human think for even two seconds that their opinion is of any fucking, like, 
any value whatsoever. You what? What? Like, do you you really think? And it's and for some reason, it's only well, I guess it only kind of applies a little bit. Not as negative. It doesn't as negatively apply in my mind when I think about someone complimenting me, but it doesn't help as much. I shouldn't equate those two things. They're very different, but similar only in my crazy head in the fact that, like, if you insult me, it puts you in a place like, oh, you're insulting me? Like, well, okay, then we're not, we're clearly not buds right now. So who the fuck are you to think that you, like, so now you insult me because we're not friends. So now you're just, you're just a person. You're just one of these fucking walking around flesh bags that really only interests me if they're fun to look at or I need them to do a thing in the world to make my life convenient. Now, are we getting into the nitty gritty of how I'm clearly a narcissistic psycho? Yes, but I will tell you (laughs) on top of that, that the reason I don't like compliments is because I hate myself with a passion. I don't think that I deserve them because I'm a terrible fucking person. Like I'm a real big piece of shit. So any compliment is really not, I I can't take that because if I start to accept compliments, they will run wild. I will start to think like some of these things I say as a joke, I have to say them jokingly because deep down there's a part of me that actually thinks that it's true and it's not. It's not. I have to tell myself that consistently to remind myself so that my ego doesn't go fucking hog wild. And then I start thinking I know way more than I know. Because it's not, I don't have the ability to just be confident in the things that I know, the things that I can do. I can only be self-deprecating and somewhat negative to, and that's all to, to, to battle this intense desire to be like, I'm the fucking best at everything and I'm never wrong. And that's the thing. I like being wrong. It drives me insane. I hate it. it. Disgusts me with passion. Like being wrong is one of the worst things in the world. To the point at which I have to force myself to admit out loud to people if I find out I was wrong. I can't. Like if I won an argument and I find out later that the only reason I won is because the person didn't know a fact. I was just dead wrong. I have to come out and say something about it. I have to. I can't just not. And I. I hate it. I hate it when I have to. Happened recently with that interview with the vampire show because I was bitching about the fact that the guy's black. Because in my head, they're in France. And I'm like, what, what, what fucking black? Cause, and it, for some reason, I thought that interview with the vampire starts in France. Like it started in France and that, then they moved, it moved to the United States and then it went back to Europe after they killed Lestat. I thought that's how it went. I'm wrong. And I was basing most of my complaints about him being black because it didn't fit the timeline at all. But, you know, he's, a, he's an American plantation owner, which, yes, he could be black. It would be very unlikely and unbelievably rare for him to be black. But, yeah, well, the other problem is, like, you kind of – wokeness has made you make him black, which is what annoys me the most about it. It's like you just made him black to make a point, which disgusts me. I fucking hate that so much. It's like, he's not, it's, the character's not black. You think it thought it'd be cool or it's an artistic choice or this actor is the best actor for the role. He's black because woke shit they think sells and it will sell to this type of uh, target audience. It's going to probably sell. I don't know though. Cause I feel like, I think, I feel like the vamp wanting to fuck a vampire genre crosses political, political lines and ideologies. I think, I think that's, intrinsic to being a female is wanting desperately to be fucked by an undead vampire that's like 300 years old it's like, it's all the it's all the power he's got so much power it's like you just want to be choked and bit you crazy bitch which there's nothing wrong with that mind you but that's really let's be honest finding that out that like girls don't girls don't watch porn but they read a lot of it they read a lot of saucy dirty shit it's great like the, the, to find out that people still read romance novels is hilarious. Like, if you don't know this and you're a guy listening to this and you do not know the 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 market for, I mean, it's because it's because these ladies are reading on their phones now. You have no idea. You think you, you think she's been sitting there on Instagram all fucking day? Nope, she's been reading about Lancelot deep dicking Guinevere hard as fuck, and in very graphic detail too. Like these, it's. Don't hold back when you're talking dirty in these bitches' ears because I'm telling you right now, they've heard it all. They've read it all. They're dying for someone to say it. They're dying to be like, you like that? I'm actually not going to do what I thought about just doing because it's real gross. 
Sorry about that. Holy shit. Anyway, but they're dying to hear you say some just real raunchy shit into their ear. So g- get after that. And that, by the way, uh, sex tip of the week is, uh, if you if you want to know, talking dirty, Manuel Ferreira is apparently the man, right? He just says real dirty shit in these bitches' ears in French half the time. <clears throat> but that's the thing. Just whisper dirty shit in their ear, and you don't have doesn't have to make sense because they can't really hear you anyway. If you're doing a good job, they can't hear you really anyway. So you know, a little dirty talk in the ear, you say almost whatever. They can't, and if they, and if they ask what, like they're not doing a good enough job, you need to focus up in other areas. But that's just a little little, little tidbit, little tidbit of the week. Uh, the fuck was I talking about a second ago? See, see there you go, you're off rails. But yeah, anyway, speaking of which. Back to the fact that I'm genuinely concerned about my daughter and, like, how how do I raise her properly so that she doesn't allow fucking people to treat her like shit is really the only question that I have. It's like, wh- how? Because how? it doesn't seem to be possible. It seems to be that other chicks just get lucky and the guy that finds them is not a complete piece of shit. Like, I would classify myself as not a complete piece of shit. Like, I'm definitely a fucking asshole and a bit of a piece of shit, but not a complete one, you know? And so, the people the people I'm with are very lucky, I think. And, but these, I mean, these other people, their entire lives are, like, wrapped around these guys that are, they're trash. And it's, there's, I mean, honestly... I know more women in bad relationships than I know ones in good ones. That could be a thing, though, is that, like, the the fact that they have a bad relationship is the reason why they're friends with me in the first place, because there wouldn't be a scenario where they would even be talking to me at all. Not that I'm like that. I used to be like that before. I've really kind of let that go, being, like, a, a bit of a man whore. I really let that go in the last three or four years, because you, you grow out of it. It's not fun. And then you start thinking about it and like, and you start to see like where some of the people you've done that with and like where they're at. And it's not helpful. Like it's not helpful. It's not helpful and or fun. Like when you're 20, it kind of is fun a little bit. It's like a little fun. As long as like, you know, you're, you're not being a bastard about it, like complete piece of shit and a lying dickhead, then it can be somewhat fun. It's not really doing anything positive. You're not helping anyone, but it is hedonistically fun. Like it just, it is, it is, it's why people do it. But, like, as you get older, you start to realize, like, you can't do that when you're in your 30s. Because you're, like, if you sleep with someone, it, you're, and you don't, like, have it, any interest in, like, a relationship with that person, you're really just adding to, you're just going to be a bad memory. Which is the worst part. Like, I don't want to ever have sex with someone and they think about me, like, five years later, like, God, I fucking regret doing that. Like, that was a mistake. That's the worst. That's the worst. The worst you talking about before. I, I I don't I don't fuck to to bust it up. I can do that at home with a handful of coconut oil. Way to be great. Like that's I'm not using some chick like a flashlight. That's fine. I got one on the stand over there. I don't need to do that. So like I want them to enjoy themselves. Like I would ho- I would hope that that's what people are doing. Finding out like as you get older that that's not the goal here. That a lot of guys are just using chicks like their flashlights. Like. Do you understand you don't have to date a flashlight or listen to it talk or any of the stuff that I know you hate? Like, I know you hate all that. Flashlight's right there. Like, I, I mean, there's there's untold amounts of porn. If you think a chick's attractive, I promise you there's a chick on the internet that sucks cock that looks just like her. I guarantee it. I've been finding them since I was in college. All right? That's, I mean, that I'll tell you right now, as a sexual degenerate, that's a go-to move. I break up with a chick. Well, I, I, they break up with me. I'm definitely, if I haven't already, finding a porn star that looks just like them, and I just beat meat to that for like six months until I get over them. And then you got to keep that, in the, you keep that in the spank bank. Anyway, you got to keep that locked up there. Like that's the thing. I don't know how they feel about it, but like if if you've had sex with me, that shit's locked in my memory bank, and I will I will dial that shit back up and handle business. Don't think I won't. Like you may be done with me, but I'm not done with you. I'll dial you back up like a motherfucker. Like, like if it's like fourth time in the day, I'm digging back in the vault. Back in the, maybe. Not all the time. Sometimes, though. Sometimes we're going back there. And there's a question. How far back are you allowed to go in your 
in your masturbatory memory, right? How far back can you go before like your? Does it make you? Does it as it grows? Like can you? Or is like you hit a certain age and it's like I can no longer go back to those memories. I have to let them go, or else I'm a sicko. I don't know because then it's the, are you are you beaten off to the memory or are you beaten off to the chick? Because I could say that almost entirely it's the memory. It's the situation scenario. Like it's kind of hot, you know. But if you're thinking, well, I think it might be it might be very uh, might be a thin line. <clears throat> thin line. Speaking of pedophiles, the I was watching uh, a podcast with Jordan Peterson and this priest, Catholic priest guy. And the whole time I'm watching it and while he's talking, I can't stop asking myself, is this guy a pedophile? And it's it's crazy that we're at a point where, like, I, you have to ask that. Does the fucking, the Vatican just shuffle, they shuffle people around. The Catholic Church will shuffle pedophiles around. Have you seen a movie called Searchlight? Spotlight? Spurt, spotlight? It's Spotlight. The, nope, that's a, that's not it. I think it's called Spotlight. I might not. I might just not have it. Yes, it's called Spotlight. 2015 Michael Keaton movie. It's fantastic. In 2001, editor. It's a, based off a true story. Editor Marty Barron of the Boston Globe assigns a team of journalists to investigate allegations against John G. Jahan Go Jovan G E O G H N G H A N. An unfrocked priest accused of molesting more than 80 boys. It, Dude, it's fucking wild. Led by editor Walter Robbie Robinson, Michael Keaton, reporters Michael Resendez, Mark Ruffalo, Matt Carroll, and Sasha Pfeiffer. Sasha Pfeiffer interview victims and try to unseal sensitive documents. I mean, it's not only like a cover with a, a, gov, a, a cover up with a church, dude. It's a cover up with the church, the police department, the local government. Like everybody's involved in hiding this fact because they're in. I mean, this is Boston. This is fucking. This is Catholic City, baby. This is. <clears throat> I mean, so then you find out how many the priests that they've done this with, where they just shuffle them around from city to city, to the point where, like, I genuinely and I don't think that I'm wrong to have to ask with, like, are is the person I'm looking at a pedophile? Like, I don't know. I don't know, and I like. It's it was because like he was saying things that I I was interested in, but I couldn't. I was so hesitant to take him seriously or to have to place any kind of stock in what this guy's saying, simply because of the fact that like there's a there's a there, I think there's a higher than normal chance that this dude's a pedophile. He's probably not. He is probably this is, and again this is I didn't see the guy's name, which is great, uh, but he's probably not. More than likely not. But it was so much so that I was like I. I'm going to fucking listen to what this dude's saying. Like, I'd be like, be like, well, you know, I was I was a firm supporter of uh, Jared and Subway. I, I also lost a bunch of weight in the uh, Subway diet. He did what now? Uh, so you can't really, I just couldn't take it all that seriously. And it, I mean, I don't know. It's a thought. It's something to think about, you know. It's a thought. It's a thought I had and have had part and parcel. That's a drinking game. Listen to Jordan Peterson's lectures and drink every time he says part and parcel. He yeah, he makes me sad sometimes when I watch him. He gets like the, his first couple interviews on Joe Rogan are so illuminating, and then all of his um his YouTube channel that breaks down the Bible in a way that I had never heard it described before to a point where like I actually started to listen because it seemed more plausible than it seemed more plausible in the way that he describes it as like for me to conceptualize it whether or not again whether it's right or wrong I don't know but I'm more interested in that to hear about that and to listen to that it's made me go from because I still wouldn't assign any kind of a religion because I have this I have like a, a an idea that the the reason why there's so many religions isn't so much that they're right and that they're wrong is that they're right for the people that they're crafted for. Like these people believe this because that's the path that's been set for them. Like by, like by whatever, whatever, whatever God is. Cause I'm, I'm, I've, I'll tell you right now, I will be disappointed if God is just some guy, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's definitely not that. I know in the description of God in the Bible is like when they ask like what are you he says I like I am something like that where 
just it, it just God isn't a thing that you'd even be able to conceptualize. Like it's every not that it is everything, but it's not. It's very weird. Is it? I, I don't. I don't have a very firm grasp on what I would conceptualize God as, even though I would say I've spoken to God once, and you don't speak. It's it's like this this transfer of feelings kind of i mean granted i was tripping balls um and it was like this this deep connected transfer of a like a warm idea and a and a feel just a feeling a feeling of and i've never felt like i don't want to say forgiveness even the, and this is something that I, i'll say it in grant I'm, I'm trying to base somewhat of a career on doing that but w- one of the most one of the one of the most one of those fun things about tripping balls is realizing how inaccurate and clumsy the English language is. Even though the English language is the most scripted language on the planet, it, just language in general is so feeble at truly describing the thoughts and emotions and feel just the thoughts that you have to put them into some into the words sometimes the words just don't fit and there is no word for it like the words not strong enough like like the word love the idea that it gets used so much it's like yeah because i don't like love doesn't doesn't even begin it's like this four letter sound that everybody just says it's on cards like is that truly the label that you would want to put on that particular emotion if it's even an emotion i mean it might be something more than that like the emotions and the feelings that you have could be something way more grand and amazing than simply just like the lame sounds that we make with our mouths. That's a it is a, I it it's a feeble attempt to describe you. You know what I mean? Because that's what you're doing whenever you talk. You're it's a it's a formulation of the thoughts that are racing through your head. Even if you're describing something that you saw, that thing you saw is still a formulation created by your brain based off of signals sent from your eyes. So, like, <clears throat> all those things lead you down this path. And, it's, and you try and make these sounds to that convey to someone else so that they can connect in their brain to the emotion. And you guys can, like, kind of share that. But even then, is are are you sure that you're both really feeling the same thing? Is it is that word powerful enough to convey that emotion to this person, or is it because we say it so much or it's used so much that it's lost its power, like it's spread out, it's spread so thin? Because like some a lot of times, just trying to describe the thoughts or the the feelings that you have, the, the words aren't enough. Like it's not they're, they're not even close to enough. And it could be that there's not enough people that have actually experienced like tripping, but like just this idea. And I just, the, my big takeaway was it's okay if you've made mistakes, you can just do better next time. Is that that was my big takeaway from talking to God? Uh, I don't. It just, that's all. Like that's literally all I could say in terms of like trying to describe it in words because it's not. It's just there's no. There are no words to adequately describe this situation. It's just something that you would have to experience. It's like a you had to be there kind of thing. Like there's nothing I could say that's going to make you truly understand it. Like to truly get it. And that doesn't happen to everybody either. And I don't, and sometimes I wonder how much of it is me over intellectualizing the, the experience. But I don't like talking about it because I feel stupid. Like anytime I talk about like the crazy hardcore acid trips that I've had and like the things that I felt like I've learned from them, I feel dumb as shit. I just feel like an asshole. Like, oh, you're just like, oh, you tripped on acid, you had these cool thoughts. It's like, yeah, I, I did though. <laughs> like, I did, and they they're really meaningful to me, and I I hate sharing them because I, like saying them out loud, I sound like a fucking idiot, and I hate it. It's like, oh, cool. I sound like, I sound nuts. I sound like that guy in the episode of Seinfeld who's putting a fucking pyramid on George's head. Like, just drink the tea. You gotta drink it all. Yep, yep, keep drinking. Like, that's, that's how I feel whenever I talk about any of the things that I feel like that I've learned or thought or felt while tripping on acid. Except for some of the, like, well, some of the cooler shit. Like the, like the, the idea that, like, this 
like that doing these psychedelics is some kind of especially where they they're derived from or always you seem to be derived from plants and that what you're doing is it's like you're biohacking your brain in a way that these plants can now communicate with you so anytime you're talking to something it's the plants that are around you that you're talking to and like these people that's where the drive to go into nature is or maybe your brain's been hijacked or the the frequency with which the universe works on is expanded so now you're getting more channels than just the one that channels your consciousness into this meat sack kind of like the idea of being like flesh mechs that's kind of that's kind of fun that like the that your conscious that your your consciousness exists somewhere out there in the, this like combined ether where everybody is one and that the desire to be separate and to be an individual leads you to inhabit the body of some mortal creature and that eventually like that sometimes you you get to be human and then that being a human is the complete opposite of being that floating consciousness that's combined with everyone else's so it's like such a unique experience to be human would be is you get to be almost as close to that consciousness but completely autonomous from everyone else around you so it might be fun and freeing to be in an existence where the only thoughts you hear are your own i don't know i'll be honest with you i don't know what the fuck i even said for like the last 15 minutes of this podcast but hopefully it it was it made sense and hopefully i can stop doing a thing that i notice i do where i use a big word but i don't mean to use it like to sound cool it's because it's the only word i know that fits in that place because i'm dumb as fuck i don't know what words mean i only know how to use them contextually based off of how i heard someone in a show tv a tv show a movie or like a podcast or a youtube video use the word previously and then i just realize i can use that and use it in that situation to describe that particular feeling emotion or thought and that's what i do i don't necessarily try to sound smart because i don't think it sounds smart especially when i use the word wrong which happens quite often. And the people just don't know I used it wrong. But I know. Which is really fucking annoying. But yeah. So hopefully that was uh, clear and concise. That intro though. It might even be the outro. You know what? It might be the outro. Let's spark it up right now. Oh, is it? Is it rolling in? It better be rolling in. It better be hitting the height. Hitting the height. Alright, motherfuckers. I will see you next week, hopefully. And as always, if anyone asks... I don't regret the things that I have done, but those I did not do. Take it out.